Hey, what's going on out there, YouTubers? I'm playing with new OBS configurations. Or they're playing with me. Let's just be honest about this. Wow, I remember going live in a click. And now it's been like days trying to figure out how to go live. Uh, does anyone know how to live stream? Is it supposed to be this hard? Listen, granted, I'm an analog guy, so every digital molehill is a mountain for me. So if you're, if you're on my call list, if I've already reached out to you and you've helped me to get this far, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's we'll see what happens. Daryl, uh, welcome aboard. I'm glad you made it. Sunshine Aquatics, it's good to see you. I love technology <laughs> and I'm still trying to build a positive relationship with it and I'm not so certain how it feels about me. So Sunshine Aquatics, I got something out in the mail for you, right? Have you got your package yet? Minoxky Tank, hello there and good afternoon, 1.23 p.m. here in the east. 35 degrees uh, earlier this afternoon, uh, frost on the windshield, winter hasn't given over yet, although the daffodils are in bloom, Bradford pear trees blooming all over the place. Um, it was a little chilly, you know, um, the reason I wanted to go live today was to talk about bettas in the hobby. I recently acquired a new betta, and it was cold, it was chilly, I was concerned about that warm water fish coming in such cold weather, but it made it in good shape. I ordered it from, hey, BTW Aquatics. Looks like a new name. Glad you're here. And if it's not, it's the failing memory, that's all. It's nothing to do with you. Um, I can't I can't say enough good things about Beta Oasis. Beta Oasis is a business growth from collaboration with the My Aquarium Box guys and the Green Oasis Farms team. And um, they're doing it right. They care, they ask, they listen, they act. I, wow. I, I, <laughs> I mean, why, no sense wasting any effort complaining when you can ask. You can go right to the source and ask. These guys are all over social media and they'll respond, they'll, they'll answer, and they want feedback from the community, from the fish fam. Hey, you're keeping the fish. What do you think? So, uh, and just a little bit of feedback that I've given on my experience with the Beta Oasis kit package, changes have already been made, already implemented, uh, implemented, implemented, and that's impressive to me. How many how many uh, fish, tropical fish, fish keeping hobby businesses can you say, I spoke, they listened, and now there's a change in place. It's going to help me be a, a better aquarist and others. So I, I just need to tell you that that's, that's outstanding for Better Oasis. And it's only because of the heart and the desire and the motivation of the My Aquarium Box guys and the Green Oasis Farms team. Um, Sunshine Aquatics is currently in paying fish rack supports and tanks. Okay. Learning to keep fish. What's up? Hello. Flynn's Fish Forum. Welcome. Good to see you. How you doing, Mr. Flynn? Click that like button, fish fam. Thank you, Sunshine Aquatics. I appreciate that. And don't forget to share. Um, along the lines of growing the River Life channel, if I can deviate here for just a second, uh, just before going live I noticed I had like 1,296 subscribers. Thank you all very much. Thank you all for being in this live stream with me. I really appreciate your forbearance as we learn how to get better at this and come smoother, make it a better experience for everyone. But just under 1,300 um, subscribers I'd like to hit that milestone 1300 because being so close is like it's like a rash you just want to scratch come on 
four more subscribers. If you guys have um, other people in your household and you can say, hey, here's some cool content. Why don't you check it out? Hit that subscribe button. No, oh, I'd appreciate it. So anyway, back to betas. Probably, I'm going to say I feel like it's a good choice for a beginner aquarist. I think there are enough domestically bred bettas. We're not going to deplete any of the wild population uh, with the pet store variety betta splendens, which I understand is basically man-made at this point. Uh, the long, flowing, beautiful fins that I love, they're not conducive to a real healthy life in the wild. It slows the fish down, tires the fish out, makes it less competitive for food and less able to escape from predators and all of that. So um, I, I don't see any pressure on the wild fish and therefore uh, not a lot of pressure on the environment directly. You know, always keeping in mind the carbon footprint of shipping and maintaining and so forth. It just reminds me to be re as responsible as I can. Uh, I think the betta being a labyrinth fish, being able to breathe air from the surface, um, makes it a, a good choice, better than most for beginning aquarist. Uh, I think the goldfish used to have uh, this connotation as being the, a starter fish, and now we feel like it, it grows too big to be kept in such a small container. That's no good. Uh, they generate a lot of ammonia. Beginning aquarist may be not so good at water quality control. So, um, so yeah, I think the beta may be the way to go for beginning aquarist. And let's, let's face it, we want more beginners in the hobby. We want people getting involved and enjoying and having success and a great experience in the fish keeping hobby. So the beta is the way to go. Definite eye candy, kind of an easy sell. Um, and we're, you know, we got our eye on the ball. I'm doing good, Brendan. Thanks for asking. Uh, Sunshine, glad you got the box. Glad you enjoyed the stickers. I thought you'd like those. Um, I, I, we got our eye on the ball, and there's some room for improvement. I think the very small containers that the brand, uh, chains, the big box brand pet stores are selling for simply profit, I, I don't like. I think we can vote with our dollar, and we can influence others to do the same thing and say, hey, avoid those containers. They're too small. That's not what we want to keep our fish in. Uh this beta oasis bowl that i got is no joke heavy duty blown glass hand blown glass three gallons and man was that thing gorgeous if you haven't seen my video please check out the the better oasis video it, right out of the box substrate rocks live plants driftwood just made for a gorgeous aquascape without a lot of let me say no technical skill involved. Just put it in the bowl. Yeah, basically, take the contents out, rinse them off, drop it in the bowl, enjoy your fish keeping experience. Uh, 16 steps on the instructions that I got, they've been amended since then. Um, success is almost guaranteed for the beginner. Uh, I'm giving feedback to the guys based on my experience. Again, they're taking the feedback, they're implementing it. They want everyone to have a good experience. I'm on board with believing that the betta is a good starter fish. If someone's going to be a, a starter, a, a newbie, a beginner into hobby, they've got to start somewhere. They've, they've got to start somewhere. And I think a three-gallon fish bowl is less intimidating, perhaps, than a 10-gallon aquarium. Uh, maybe with the fish and the live plants, everything included, the cost could be less off-putting as well. Uh, JH Aquatics, hello. Welcome aboard. I'll be in touch with you later. Uh, I look good now, but there are scars from trying to figure out how to go live. Uh, happy to say, I hope the image is okay, the audio and the video. I'm on my new Logitech webcam, the 930E, finally. So we'll see how that works out. Um... Joseph, I'm glad you're here. I know you have a heart for wild fish and you love the wild bettas, and I do too. They're 
they're just amazing. They're an amazing fish. I'd like to know more about them. But we're discussing bettas for, we're not discussing yet, actually, I'm just ranting, about uh, the betta splendens being a beginner fish and how I recently acquired one from betta oasis. Let's see what. Okay, making an adjustment here, bear with me. Okay, now I can see all of your chat. Very good. Audio and video is great. Okay, thanks a lot. Well, good, because that little webcam cost a hunk of change. I think it was around 100 bucks, so I'm glad that it's working well. Allison Chains Aquatics, welcome. Um, look forward to you getting a beta soon. I know you'll put some pictures up for us on Instagram. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Yeah, I get by with a little help from my friends. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Uh, bettas as beginner fish. I don't think that's saying we should abuse bettas. I think if we have an opinion because we have experience or education in regards to fish keeping, maybe bettas in particular, it's just maybe a motivation to share that information with some beginners. Make information available. Publish information on social media. Make yourself available through fish clubs. Um, let your local fish store know that you'd be willing to be a better ambassador if they run into someone in the hobby that's just getting started. Pass along an email or something. Uh, make yourself available as a resource to new fish keepers. Yep, lots of picks. Never enough picks, right? Okay, so Beta Oasis is a business partnership of my aquarium box, Green Oasis Farms. And what these guys have in common as aquatic hobbyist fish, uh, fish keepers is that they are they're fish keepers themselves, they're social media people, and they are community members. They speak to the community, they listen to the community, and they take that information to the marketplace for our benefit so they're in fact they're statesmen for the hobby so that being said i'm not just bragging on them i'm i'm impressed over the moon with the way they do business i'm encouraging you to connect with them engage in their product give your feedback because we all have different ideas and we can't capitalize on them if they're not shared these guys are are one conduit that allows us to take our ideas to the mainstream and then see immediate feedback that become benefits for all of us. So, and they're not the only ones, I'm, I'm sure, but they're the ones that I've gotten closer to recently. And now that I know we can discover and benefit from a conduit like this, I'm looking for others. Who's it going to be? Uh, Sunshine Aquatics, yes, I'm going to be at Aquashella. I think Corey at Aquarium Co-op is, he's a little bit cryptic. He's got something going on. I don't know what it is, but I believe it's going to be very similar. He is always receiving feedback via his live streams and his videos, the comments on the videos. And the massive uh, local fish store business that he's built by becoming not local, shipping all over the United States, um, I think he's going to take some of that awkward feedback to the manufacturing world and say, hey, we, we, we just want it. Just do it. We don't want to know about the margin, and we don't want to know what the plans are for two to five years down the road. We just would like to see this. Can you do it? And sometimes it, if you have a champion like that, then you, the manufacturer can say, do you think it would be a good idea? Well, based on my millions of dollars of sales last year yes i think something like that would be a very good idea and so there's a brand new energy a new initiative to help the hobbyist so i'm linking all of that right now at least in this live stream to the beta in particular the beta splendors the pet shop run-of-the-mill beautiful beta I think it can do great things. I think there are great things in store for the hobby because of the beta. 
if you look on uh, YouTube in particular, it's not losing any popularity. It's gaining popularity. Um, got some comments over here. JH Aquatics. That, and now, again, Joseph is uh, he's a citizen scientist. That's my opinion. He is a, a maven. He understands the hobby. He works with different types of water, different types of biotopes, understands a lot of the needs of particular fishes. So I, I respect his opinion on, on many different levels based on his experience and knowledge. And uh, Joseph and I have spoken several times in person. I follow a lot of his content, and he hosted me on one of his wildly popular live streams. So I have a lot of respect for uh, JH Aquatics. And he says the bettas can be a beginner fish. They can still be tough. And the smaller the water column, the harder it is to maintain the nitrogen cycle in a healthy water column. Absolutely true. No, no question about it. So in regards to a beginner, my point was um, in, in parallel to that, not in contrast at all, that a beginning aquarist um, may be intimidated by aquarium size, and, you know, there's a learning curve. We all had to learn, regardless of where we are on our experience level, we had to learn. And I think having a labyrinth fish is a good fish for a beginner to learn water quality because of its ability. Not that poor water quality is acceptable. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that a, a beginner aquarist might better be able to make the turn as they grow in their ability, their fish keeping ability, with a beta versus anything else that I can think of. And there may be some exceptions. And uh, what comes to mind are some fish that are far less uh, attractive and far more secretive, which now you're not talking about a beginner fish either. That's not really going to attract anyone to the hobby. They can and they will jump. It's a fact. I've had lids on all of my uh, bettas, and I also like a lid to keep the heat in and to keep the water in to prevent such rapid evaporation. So I'm a, I'm a fan of the lid, and I've made lids. I've bought pre-made lids. I've used, I've improvised for lids, whatever I had laying around, but I've always favored a lid. So I certainly agree with that. Hey, Larry Deese, what is going on? Simply Shrimps in the house. Hello, welcome aboard. So let's, uh, what, what is our opportunity? I mean, there's some people in here, you're, you're not beginners. I mean, you're more advanced aquarists than I am. I, I, do you think it's okay now to say, hey, maybe Beta is the portal. It's not the portal. Maybe it's a portal to get some new folks in here. And how can I help new aquarists? Um, I love YouTube. You don't even have to know someone to help them. You just have to be willing to put it together and get it uploaded, leave it on the shelf like a, a library book, and whoever wants it, whenever they want it, can check it out. Um, I don't think I feel that same flexibility on Instagram, but Instagram reaches people instantly. Um, whoever's, on, whoever's on deck when you publish is going to be there for your information, so... I think links and directions to other pieces of information, uh, maybe establishing a chain of resources, if you will. I think that's a good thing just to have lots of attachment points for the beginning aquarist to link into and not have to do without um, good information, not have, not have to search for three days on YouTube to find something that will help you connect a camera to... Um, to some software that will work with YouTube so you can do a live stream, but maybe do one search and get hundreds of videos to watch concerning proper beta care, best practices, some mistakes that you need to know about so you can avoid uh, directions to uh, good titles, maybe some Amazon links to books, things of that nature. Uh, if if, you, if you're not that person, maybe you know someone that is, and you could act as an intermediary, a bridge, to connect the beginners with someone who has some information. 
Uh, Sunshine Aquatics has a black orchid bed, A, beautiful, in a 45 community tank, B, that thing is happy. He's, he's, in a, he's back in the rice paddy of his ancestors, 45 gallons, wow. Andy Confetti, hello there, how are you doing? Welcome aboard. Somebody, well, I, I'm guessing that's you, Andy Confetti. Maybe someone else. Sorry about that. You know, that's a gripe I have with Apple. When my iPhone rings, my uh, any device that I'm using is just interrupted. And it's a crazy thing. I have an iPhone, and the, the least function that I use on the iPhone is the phone. A lot of internet... Uh, YouTube watching, game playing, calculating, all the apps, music. It is my radio now, but I don't hardly talk on the phone. Messaging, crazy thing. Sunshine Aquatics, I'm reading your comment, and I am so on track with where you're at. Sunshine Aquatic says, I think just showing your beta and its proper setup on social media goes a long way to educating new people uh, who've been thinking of getting a fish. And not only that, it's attractive to them. It, it, it lets people think, huh, would I like to have one of those? And I'm all about building the community. Let's, let's bring some people in here. Once we get them, let's, let's be responsible ambassadors and make sure... They have the resources they need to be confetti. Uh, to be confetti, I just saw any confetti's comment. To be successful, Dumbo Beta and the 125. Oh wow, gorgeous, gorgeous fish. I wish we could put photographs in chat. I'd love to see some of these bettas right now. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, so JH Aquatic says, okay, he's in agreement with me. Yeah, the beta is a good beginner fish to help people learn the nitrogen cycle. Well, now that you have a fish in care, guess what? Learning the nitrogen cycle became a part of your life. You're either already aware of that or you're about to become aware of that if you're a fish owner. And I'm a, a big time bird watcher. Uh, I love to watch birds. I'm the vice president of the Tennessee Ornithological Society, have been for over 10 years. And what I know is people who love birds, for whatever reason, there, there are many reasons just like people love keeping fish, they can only love birds for a little while before they start loving where the birds live. First, it's a, it's a, a visual attraction. And then it's kind of a relationship. It's an involvement. Oh, if I want to keep seeing these beautiful birds, I need to make sure that uh, where they live is okay. I need to turn my yard in, into a haven for the local birds to make sure they want to come to my yard so I can look at them when I want to. So I think, I think that's true in fish. It may be a little farther walk to get there, but since I've learned about Project Piaba, and how they are doing such a wonderful job of being a culturally sensitive and be ecologically aware of getting fish into the hobby for us to keep uh, that's I am in support of Project Piaba happy to have named them as my charity of choice from the Aquashella charitable donation Aquashella is coming up at the end of this month 30th 31st gosh is that a week away, something like that. Oh man, it's the 19th. So, man, I am looking forward to seeing so many of you guys there. ELR, welcome aboard. I can show you my Beta Oasis. I've uploaded a video. It was my last video, as a matter of fact. I hope you enjoy it. It's any confetti, your phones for photos and YouTube. And by the way, um, after iPhone 7 and after, the camera was just amazing. I stopped taking pictures with anything other than my iPhone. I used it through binoculars, digiscoping. I used it through a spotting scope, digiscoping. 
and uh, I have a Sony Handycam that I do videos with. I'll show you my Handycam. So it's a whatever the nomenclature is. HDRPJ 540. Wow, that's a mouthful. And there it is. And see this little window right here? That's actually a projector. So when I activate the projector button, whatever is in the monitor is projected from this lens onto a wall or a ceiling or a floor wherever you're pointing it and it has a, a projection focus slide right here so that's pretty fun to look at what you've captured in real time right away but this is this is my uh, YouTube camera it's got a little micro card here it's got a USB charger that folds into the handle and I use this night night eyes lockable clip and what I do is when I'm in the field I, I, I use that clip on my belt buckle and then just let it I let it hang off my belt and then after a few times of using that in the field you get used to just taking it off your belt and it's it's in use pretty quickly and that it's very light that way and then I'm able to also carry my uh, my small tripod the flexible tripod with a Ulanzi ST03 Okay, it folds flat, screw adjustable, everything's milled aluminum, it's got a hot shoe, I'm sorry, a cold shoe mount, and this is the Rode Microvid, is that what that's called? Super sweet audio, very impressed with this. Once I got the... So I was recording with my iPhone, right? Horrible for wind noise. I mean, if if there is a breeze, your audio is shot. So I never take the dead cat off. It's just, uh, it doesn't interfere with the sound. If I'm outside, it cuts all the wind out. No problem. Because it's an iPhone with a lightning, I had to use the adapter. Plug it into the phone. Phone slides in. I think the Tennessee power to get it. Can you see that? Yeah, so I'm conference ready with this thing. Shout out to uh, Swiskey. It's an election year. I'm getting texts from all the politicians. Riverwife there. Hey, Riverwife. How are you? So, that's a handy little dandy. Plug that audio in. You're recording. So with the iPhone camera and the Sony Handycam, I can get some pretty good shots. And then the only issue is filming through glass. If you're trying to get a fish, sometimes you get reflection, refraction. If the glass is bowed at all, crazy things happen with light. But I like that setup. And now you know when I go to Aquashello, and Aquashello is going to be full of things I want to shoot. I'm going to be getting a lot of fish and a lot of festival, just in general. And that's going to be it. I may incorporate a larger tripod. I've got a Monfranto, an old Monfranto tripod, and I had this extra tripod shoe to, to fit in there. So if I'm going to be doing a sustained or a distant shot, I may snap it on the larger tripod, but that's it. I do have an action cam. I've got the Sony action cam with the waterproof case I can take underwater. Fantastic to have as a utility camera. 
I don't like it as a personal space camera. I prefer to use the phone and I get so many other apps that are available with that. But if I want, and by the way, I don't know if you noticed on my phone, there's also um, a life proof case. Love the life proof. This is not my first life proof case. I've got, I've had several of these. It's got a, an opening for your lightning port that's sealed. And so you can put that underwater. I do a lot of underwater uh, videography with that life proof case. There is a problem. There's a problem. There's a glitch. That screen is touch sensitive, right? So when it feels the pressure of water, sometimes the screen gets activated and it will interrupt your shot. So, so beware. You got to play with it and get used to, to that kind of thing. But otherwise, um, the phone and the Sony Handycam, they capture what you need captured. If I ever get to go to Peru on a fish collecting mission or the Rio Negro with Project Piaba, those are the devices I'm going to take. And if there's an opportunity to get a, a camera stationary underwater, I've, I've got the, the Sony Action Cam, which I don't recommend as part of your... It's an option. I, I don't recommend it as, as priority. If you've got some extra money and you want a specialty camera, that's a good one to get. They called it the GoPro killer um, when it was brand new a year and a half ago. It shoots in 4K, and it had more features, more options than the, the GoPro did. But I, you know how technology is. So, I mean, that's 15 minutes ago. It's probably antiquated. The special edition River Life camera. Right, right. Yeah. I, I need to get one that can do something with this. <laughs> oh, I told my wife that a lot of YouTubers have staff, including, you know, hair and makeup. We're not there yet. The fish nerd. What's going on, Carlos? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, you can't. He needs to play with getting underwater shots in his tanks. You can't have enough. Jake's Aquatics, not, not this summer. Hold that thought. Let's, let's go to Peru. Hold on to that. Not this summer. Um,. Why are there not more underwater shots, fish tubers? Is it because we don't have the equipment? I get that. But if you've got a camera, if you've got a smartphone, I think there's a life-proof case or some other brand of waterproof case. I tell you, after you get a good microphone, that's priority number one. Get you a good microphone, and after that, I'd say priority number two is some waterproof. Uh, option for your phone camera and you're as soon as you get that you're doing underwater shots sunshine says don't forget to hit the like button man i sure would appreciate it if you'd hit that like button and share sharing is caring do that share thing hey v stag good to see you buddy um I'll tell you what, V-Stag, before you purchase that camera, just consume all the YouTube content you can because when I was shopping for my action cam, that has to be one of the most popular genres on YouTube is, is camera comparisons and especially action cams. Uh, and I'll tell you what to look for, in my opinion, after I did all the research, it comes down to Sony or the, uh, the one of the Hero series. One of the GoPros. So, and they each are uh, configured a little differently. So you just watch and decide which one you like the best. Yeah, underwater, Joseph. That's right. Yeah, I know what. You, okay, so the fish nerd says he's got a GoPro, but he never thinks to throw it in the tank. Well, you know why? Because. When you're filming, when you're generating content as a YouTube content creator, all of a sudden you find out that you are the talent, you're the cameraman, you're the writer, the producer, the director, you're the safety guy, you're the caterer, and guess what? You don't get to do everything that would be good to do because you're in the moment juggling. You've got more tasks going on than you can handle, and you can't take your mind off of... Um, all of the things to focus on one thing 
or even step back and say, okay, now where do I go from here? Because sometimes the timing doesn't allow for that. You've got to get the shot. You know how much time you have before the next life event happens, and you've got to get edited and uploaded. So I understand where the fish nerd is coming from. And so at my age, I don't have to make any excuses for writing notes. I mean, I, I got notes everywhere. Okay, you're, you're looking at a list of videos. And I made sure I had this quarter, I had enough content planned. And I'm jumping all over the place, you can see. And then as I hear something, as I pick it up, I just grab, here's the back side of the same car, I grab whatever's handy and make a note. And that makes, it's another decision marker in my old brain. And before you know it, I'll come across something often enough that I remember to do it. And then, in the case of underwater photography, the first time I did it, with an iPhone, with a waterproof case, I was, I was shooting koi, and the result was so fantastic. Those fish were in focus, they were colorful, they were drawing fantastic comments. It's like, hey, I've got an a endomorphic sensation, and I'm going to do that again. I, I want to feel good about doing some... I, regardless of how minor the achievement, it brought positive feedback. So once you do something that's successful, you tend to repeat that. So maybe this, Carlos, is the reminder you need to try that underwater shot. And there's really nothing like it. I mean, it, you can watch fish tube videos. Uh, in my opinion, my experience is I want, and they're all wonderful, but when I see an underwater shot, when I see the camera in the fish environment, and there's, there's some different, there's, it shows the fish in a different light with less distortion and there's nothing between you and the fish. For a moment, you're in the fish environment. You're almost underwater with it. And if you don't enjoy the underwater photography that way, it's okay. It's all right. But I'm going to continue to enjoy it that way because it's super fun. Later, Carlos. KG Cichlids, hello. Yeah, that KG Cichlid says he can only throw his phone in the tank for 30 minutes. And I only, I only do short clips. And it's because of the um, touch-sensitive screen. I don't want to be away, out of contact with the phone for a long period of time, thinking I'm still recording when, in fact, something may have involuntarily activated. So I get short clips, usually focused on a single fish, not a scene. And uh, now that you mention that, though, I may want to. I want to know the limits. I may want to plant my phone for a period of time and see what's going on. I have noticed that if you can get the right angle in a glass aquarium, you can look through one side or the other and see what you're filming. That sometimes when you're looking down through the aquarium. If you're holding your phone down in the water, you, you lose the monitor. But if you look at a side angle, you can see the monitor again. I'm going to look at some, hey, Sharpies, models, and aquatics. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Um, Annie Confetti, you're nervous about using a waterproof case as you should be. These life-proof cases come with instructions on how to test them before you put the phone in. So you can seal them the weather and get the idea of what it feels like when it's properly sealed and then hold it underwater for a period of time, like you know, maybe even a couple of hours. Wait it down and see what happens after two hours. And the new iPhones, the uh, Oh, I think I've got the 10R. They're splash proof. They're, they're water resistant. Like you can drop them in a pool and retrieve them. They should be okay. A caveat there is you don't want to drop them in a saltwater tank or the ocean and think they're okay because that salt will corrode the exposed metal. I want to make sure you get that dried out. Not Nola Jane Fish Rich. Hello, how are you doing? Welcome aboard. Have I missed anybody in chat? I'm sorry. I ramble sometimes and I lose track. I sure am glad that you're here hanging out with us for a few minutes. Don't forget to hit that like button. 
It's good to see uh, the fish nerd in here. I don't think I've seen him since Aquatic Experience. That was fun. We were on the live stream for a minute together over at Flip Aquatics live stream. We were just switching fish tubers in and out of that thing so fast it would make your head swim. I hope we do that again at Aqua Shell. I don't know why we wouldn't. Otter Creek in the house. What is going on, buddy? Good to see you, Kendall. Got great new video. You guys check out Kendall's new video over there, Otter Creek Aquatics. Select pet. Man, what a great bunch of people in here. I appreciate you guys coming to hang out. For you guys that just joined, we're talking about bettas being the beginner fish, a portal fish to draw beginners in. Some advantages, it's a labyrinth fish, so as the beginner learns water quality, fish still can have an option. To not, we're not condoning poor water quality. That's not what we're doing. We're just saying that while the learning curve has been figured out by a beginner, a labyrinth fish may have a better time at breathing surface air than a fish that isn't able to do that. And they're beautiful. Yeah, I, I think if you're on the fence about whether or not you want to try a fish, Oh, man, why not? They're not that expensive, I don't think, for the the level of beauty they offer, those big fins. And uh, I've talked about a couple of points in this chat with JH Aquatics, who agrees. You know, we know that the, the temperature of the water is important, the lid is important, water quality is certainly important. Otter Creek Aquatic says, do the beta oasis have any uh, any form of filtration, any form of filtration? The answer is yes. Um, I don't I, I brought I bought mine during the pre-sale. They they ask for immediate feedback and then at launch they implemented immediate feedback, already made changes. And I think they still have one kit available and they're going to start launching other kits several days apart and I've already seen a prototype of the kit with a filter and a light so I don't know how far down the line uh, that filter is going to be but the answer is yes number one feedback on the pre-sale was filtration number two was temperature regulation and then somewhere down the line uh, lids were discussed that may, I don't know if that's ever going to be included in the kit or not. It may be listed in the instructions as for your consideration because if the beta isn't happy, it can and will jump. Okay, Sunshine Aquatic, tell, tell Haley that um, I'm sorry to be overlapping here. I'm going to wrap up soon myself and that uh, River Life said hello. If you guys haven't hit the uh, like button yet, please go ahead and do that. I don't know how many subscribers I had, but prior to the live stream, I had 1,296. Just, man, begging, itching for that milestone, that 1,300. So if you know somebody that might enjoy this kind of content, I would appreciate you sharing the content with them and encouraging them to hit the subscribe button. Um, the plants were awesome that I got from, well, I mean, so it's a partnership there. Better Oasis to sent the complete kit, rocks, driftwood, plants, substrate, bowl. Uh, upcoming kits will have options for filtration, lights. I had ordered plants from Green Oasis Farms before. Check out that video. The thumbnail says huge plants. The title says Green Oasis Farms Unboxing. Those plants were amazing. Well, these nano plants were amazing. Uh, with my kit, I got three, and um, they were Anubias, Nana Petite, a piece of spider wood, and three, like, Siru stones with white gravel substrate and a beautiful blue and white bed of splendens. Fail tail, I guess. Just fantastic. Yeah, I can't see my subscriber count now. If we've already reached 1,300, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, uh, 
I, I hear what you're saying there, Otter Creek, with the plants that you can select. And I bought extra. I bought an extra banana plant and a java fern. Looks stunning. If you haven't seen my video, check it out. My last video, Beto Oasis. Oh my gosh, that I was so impressed when I finished the setup. And again, I didn't use any technical skill, not that I had any to offer, but it wasn't any aquascaping experience required. It was just rinse off what they've given you, prepare it, boil the driftwood if you want to, put it in the fishbowl. Oh my gosh, it was gorgeous. Just beautiful. But the, um, I think the water column, the water quality issue is not about adequate. I think it's about keeping the water polished in the bowl. I like a little bit of movement, so the hang on the back or a bubbler uh, breaks up that skim on the top. I don't like to see that in the fish bowl. So filtration, I think, is this should probably just be included. In, in my taste, if, if I were a beginner, I would not want to see a film on top of the water. That would be off-putting. And if, if I were a beginner and bought a kit that had a filter in it that agitated the surface of the water, I may not ever be aware that without that, there would be a skim on top of the water. It would just be a part of the program, as I learned. And I think, again, the key here is that as, especially fish fam, uh, fish tubers, YouTube creators, we've got an opportunity to provide a stream of resource to beginners. So... Not only is the beta um, a portal to invite new people into our hobby, which we want, we all benefit from that, but also an opportunity for us to build community, to educate, to help someone along, to encourage. Learning to fish keeps as a heater. Yeah, a heater comes with even the first kit, version one. And what I look for is an upgrade to the heater. The instructions... Um, mentioned 78 degrees Fahrenheit as a goal temperature a couple of times. So, yeah, a heater will always be included with the beta kit. Sunshine Aquatics, listen, glad I can be there with you. <laughs> oh, man, uh, watching paint dry and listening to a River Life live stream, what a day, what a day. Cheers. Yeah, I did switch it up there. I got cold drinks. I got hot drinks. I got an Altoid mint. Hmm. It won't be. Somebody's gonna say in the chat, "Wow, thanks. Glad you finally did that." Well, I lost a sub. Joseph says I've got twelve ninety five. Well, ain't that the way it goes? Ain't that the way it goes? Well, I have heard if you're gonna do live streams, you're gonna suffer that downturn in subs like it's a stair step it waves you know back up but it's an ebb and flow so mass aquariums is in the house everything's going to be okay uh, mass aquariums is uh, part of the my aquarium box team and mike welcome and just so you know we've been talking about better oasis what a wonderful job you guys are doing how pleased i was with my kit the uh, improvements that you have in upcoming kits. Um, my sh this is my shot glass. Mike wants to know where my shot glass is. Now I was army, okay? Better Oasis offering new aquarist an avenue of approach that they've never had. If you know someone that likes a uh, a better maybe would like to try to have one you can order it for them you're a click away from sending someone that whole kit they go to their mailbox or their door they bring in this box and inside the box is everything just add water so that that's going to be a great thing and i hope uh, my effort is going to be to try and provide resource to these new people that we're bringing in and the new people benefit everyone New energy, new blood, new money. Uh, it, it's just an expansion of the hobby. It's growth versus decline. Okay, if you want to think about decline of the hobby, what does that do for you? Well, resources start to drop and, and go away instead of manifest themselves into new and different areas that you can benefit from. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm encouraging you to think about being a part of that resource stream. 
What can you give? What do you have to offer? And my personal philosophy says everybody has something. You have something. Let's figure out a way that you can bring it to the table so we can all benefit. Dilly dilly. Master Aquarium said you didn't open your MAB yet. No. No, I didn't. I've been spending three days trying to learn how to live stream. And I'm not doing so well. I did figure out uh, how to use, at least this time, um, the OBS, my new webcam, on my MacBook Pro. We're, we're going with it. This is what we've got. Hopefully I can repeat this when I need to. But tomorrow I'll be filming. I don't know when I'm going to actually upload the video, but I'll be filming the unboxing of the Mega Box win from last month from my Aquarium Box. Let me tell you. My Aquarium Box sent me a Mega Box uh, award, a prize, and it was a light. And the box is 60 inches long. Okay, that's five feet. Um, if you're in Europe, that's over a meter. That's a meter and a half. Huge. I can't wait. I'm going to have to get like a Megalodon tank to put this thing on if the light inside of there is that size. So tomorrow I'll probably shoot a combination. My aquarium box, freshwater box opening, and the mega box light opening. Thank you for dropping in the live stream. There's a heads up for you. And Mike has sent me a couple of secret gifts. So you never know what that means. You never know. But if there are extras, I have been known to give the extras away. In my last live stream, I did four prize pack giveaways. And most of the stuff was my aquarium box extras. Uh, as a matter of fact, I sent three of the four out in my aquarium box boxes. Mike is in here. Mike Sharpies and Models Aquatics is asking about that UK avail availability. And, <clears throat> man, that's tough. I would love for all of the UK to have that access, but that's tough. Maybe that'll happen again. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Otter Creek says he didn't get surprises. Well, you got to earn your keep, son. You've been doing this for 15 minutes. Keep after it. I think the quality of your videos um, has got you on a list of uh, up-and-coming stars. You just keep after it. You're going to be there. Mr. Sun T. All you have to do is ask in the River Life live stream. Mass Aquariums is here to make your wildest dreams come true. New York Gold in the house. What's going on? Donald, good to see you. Donald, uh, give us in chat, give us an update on your goldfish fry. How are they coming along? I think I'm going to have to try some of those if you don't have them all sold already when they become available. Okay, did I miss any comments in chat? If I did, I'm sorry. JH Aquatic says I'm back up to 1,296 subscribers. Oh, that reminds me. Hey, um, Mass Aquariums, would you consider, if you haven't already and I haven't checked, would you consider sharing my Beta Oasis video on your community page? I think what that does is it sends a notification to your subscribers that you're saying, hey, Rack uploaded this video on Beta Oasis. It's pretty cool. You can check it out. The reason I ask is that when other channels have done that for me, the typical number of views on the video triples. So I think it would be a good way to get the word out about Beta Oasis. Just consideration. You may have a personal policy against that. If you do, I understand. So how many do you have, Donald? You got um, the fryer doing awesome, even gone through a cull. What are you thinking? You got how many left? Oh, V-Stag's a winner. That's right. Did you get your box, V-Stag? I sent you a box over there. That's some nice stuff, too. That was some really cool stuff. Actually, 
hated to let that extra towel go. I love those towels. And in my uh, Better Oasis video, I used it as a screen. I clamped the towel on the rack and used the uh, fish keeping towel as a backdrop for the Better Oasis unboxing and setup. All right, Mike, thanks. I appreciate you doing that. Cool. Well, you guys are awesome. I'm going to wind this thing down. I appreciate your comments. I'm glad that you let me share with you how important I think the beta is to bringing new people into the hobby and that we're all in agreement that water quality is important as well as good housekeeping for the beta, including a heater, uh, good plants, maybe a lid, filtration, lights. And I think, um, and by the way, in closing, let me say, this is not an advertisement. This is unsponsored. I paid full retail for my Beta Oasis kit and glad that I did and would do it again. I'm very happy with the purchase. The value was there before uh, you consider all the nice things that I said about everyone involved with the Better Oasis business on the front end of this live stream. Not getting a penny for this. I actually believe this. It's how I feel. You can watch my video and see the result that I got. I don't think it's going to be atypical. I mean, there was nothing that was out of the ordinary in that box. Out of that box, I think it's very rec replicable, and everyone who gets the kit is going to have a similar success to share appreciate you being in here joseph especially for for sharing and for caring throughout the live stream um i'm just gonna have to saddle you with the responsibility of being a wrench in here if you'll accept okay thanks mike for being in here donald good to see you. a thousand fry left okay good luck with those keep them coming and put me down for a few Okay, and if I missed a comment um, or a question, go to that last video, that Better Oasis video, and leave your question in that um, in, in the comments of that video. I'll be going back there. Mike has shared it again. I'm sure it's going to be getting um, some new attention, and I'll give it a new optimization. So if you've got a question or a comment, you can leave it over there, and I'll pick it up. Okay, and I'll see you guys later. I would say I'm out. But Mike's in here, and he would know I stole that Italian goodbye from him. So I'll say this is River Life signing off. I appreciate you guys. Get out there and see it, love it, and live it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.